Good day, everyone. My name is Maria Konjelska and this is Poland Daily Culture. Our today's guest is a very mysterious person. One say he is a Jewish agent or a member of a Masonic lodge. Another accuse him of controlling the politicians. Many dislike his friendship with Father Rizik. Ladies and gentlemen, the director of From the Depths Foundation, Johnny Daniels. But before we expose all Johnny's secrets, let's watch a few of his actions. So I've been driving this taxi at last uh, here in Warsaw, here in Warsaw, Poland. It's really the culmination of a dream. You know, we set out with this idea um, not that long ago, about four months ago. And to be able to make this happen so quickly and so effectively uh, is down to incredible help that we received along the way. Uh, we received from the taxi firm from Farley Freeman in London and to, to Chelsea Football Club and, and uh, from Grant and Holocaust survivor Edward Mossberg. For all of these people who believed uh, in us and believed in this process, uh, and believed in the idea of giving back. This is really the minimum that we could do as young people, as millennials, as third and fourth generation from those who survived the Holocaust. Johnny, are you a massive agent? Well, if I tell you, I mean, look, this, this is one question that, that too many people ask if I'm a or imply that I'm some kind of agent of some kind of country, if it's not the Israelis and it's the British or the Americans or the Russians, I've heard everything. I can tell you that I'm an agent of goodwill and I'm someone who does what I do because I believe in it and because I want to leave this world better than what I have and I want to have my children experience better than what we have today. Speaking about better, your foundation, From the Depths Foundation, takes care especially for righteous among the nation. Recently, the big thing you're still developing are taxis for the righteous. How does it work? In which cities are such kind of taxis? Well, you know, we started this program, the Silent Hero um, Taxi Project, um, out of a, a real understanding of a need. You know, one of the things that there are many fantastic organizations who are doing great work in assisting and helping the righteous amongst the nations, right? So we'll start with that, that there are good people doing good things. However, there's always needs for more. Uh, and one thing that I very much felt when I'd go and visit with the uh, Association of the Righteous here in their office in Warsaw was I'd see the righteous coming on buses and on trams in the cold weather, in the hot weather, and I really felt that something should be done about it. Uh, I went back to London to visit with my family, and my grandfather was a London taxi driver. He had his medallion. Uh, he was a proud cabbie. And my uncle, uh, is a taxi driver as well. And I was in my uncle's taxi looking about, seeing the different things, and I saw quite how brilliant it was. The London taxi is a remarkable thing. It's a real mobility vehicle. You're able to completely open the back doors. Wheelchairs can enter. It's a very comfortable car to be driven in. And I thought, what a great idea it would be to bring one of these taxis uh, to Poland uh, and have it as a vehicle to service the righteous. Um, the idea progressed and developed. Since then, we've brought four taxis out here to Poland. Uh, we'll be bringing a fifth within the next few weeks as well. And right now, the service works here in Warsaw. We have over 70 hours a week where the taxis are being used, seven days a week. The righteous call our hotline, uh, ask us uh, to be taken from A to B. Our drivers will come, pick them up and drop them off. And it's something that is so wonderful to be able to help these people on a very simple level of getting them from A to B and making their lives just a little bit easier. So just to explain for our viewers, the taxis for the righteous among the nations are completely free and they can use it uh, whenever they need during the week. Correct, so whenever they need and however they need. You know, at the end of the day, these are people, th these are remarkable people who risk their lives. very few of them right yeah, now. Yeah, who risk their lives to save my Jewish brothers and sisters during the darkest, most difficult times, not just their lives, but the lives of their family as well. And so for us to offer this service, and with no questions asked, they just call and we come and pick them up and they go wherever they want to go. And it's 100% free. We were funded uh, initially uh, with the help of Chelsea Football Club, a uh, 
big other British institution and with Holocaust survivor Edward Mossberg and other wonderful um, donors on the way. And this process is running and continuing and growing. We aim to be extending this to other cities, uh, both in Poland and in other countries as well, uh, over the next year. And this is something that I'm very, very proud that I'm able to, to do on a daily basis. Well, that's incredible. Fingers crossed that it develops. You also started a project of making interviews with righteous among the nations, so showing their faces, showing their stories. Of course, they were told many times, but interviews video interviews are quite rare. How did it work? Well, I, I was surprised. Uh, I was surprised initially when I saw that, you know, again, there are great institutions doing great things, and there were recordings. There were some of the righteous had been recording telling their stories. However, not all of them. And it really shocked me. It shocked me that there wasn't this mass database of recordings. And again, I, I have a small foundation. I don't have ginormous funds. I don't have huge donors that I can pick up the phone to and say, hey, please donate us this, this, and this. And so we always have to figure out unique ways to raise funds to do things. So even with this project, you know, one of the most difficult things in terms of an interview is the interviewer, right? Is finding a good person to do an interview isn't an easy thing. And to hire such a person is expensive. So what we did, which is, I think, incredibly unique, uh, especially in terms of Poland today and probably many other places as well, is that we were able to lean on our friends in the media to conduct the interviews. So, you know, we're very grateful that you conducted an interview, for an example. We're very grateful to our friends in Newsweek, in TVN, in TVP, in Gazeta Wyborcza, in Radio Maria. We had the entire spectrum. Exactly, so everyone united. Everyone united behind this one project, which is not political, it has no political stance or understanding or meaning or anything. This is a pure conversation and discussion, and we edit and cut these videos into the smallest segments possible. Because our generation aren't gonna sit down and watch a two hour interview. It's not that interesting. It needs to be bite sized, it needs to be shareable, it needs to have the potential to go viral potentially as well. So, this is a project that we're just starting. We started with the Polish journalists. Over the next few months, we're gonna be working with a complete spectrum of journalists from Israel that will be coming here to Poland and other places to interview other righteous. We are going to be doing an interview with one of the righteous, one of the Muslim righteous in Albania, uh, which is an incredibly important story. We're telling stories of righteous in Georgia, uh, in Germany, uh, and in other countries as well, and working with a spectrum of journalists to tell these stories. I think it's also a great punchline for our viewers and hopefully everyone who is interested to listen to the stories of Righteous Among the Nation will go online to Foundation from the Depths and watch it. Thank you for watching Poland Daily Culture.